and welcome to Steve Knows and I thought I'd make this video about whether or not you should buy the Quest because it's coming up to the holiday season. We have Black Friday and we have Christmas and I know a lot of people are like, what should I get for Christmas? I don't know. Maybe you've been contemplating the Oculus Quest because it has been an amazing VR headset the community are hyping. So hopefully this will help you decide whether or not to get it. So if you've been thinking about getting the Oculus Quest, you're in the right place. We're going to be covering everything they spoke about at OC6 because there's some incredibly interesting features and also also the specifications of the Quest compared to some of the best headsets out there. First of all, we're going to cover the specifications and then we're going to cover the features. So you may know the Quest is the first 6DOF completely wireless standalone headset with dual hand tracking. Whereas previous standalone headsets required a mobile device or a single awful controller, let's not speak of this, it's the last line of the first generation VR headsets from Oculus. The Quest comes in at a price of $399, the Rift S also at the same price, the other Oculus PC VR headset. Whilst competitive to products like the Vive Cosmos, may that rest in peace, that headset is at $699 and the Valve Index being around £1,000 for the full kit. I'll say this now, if you're the kind of person where money is not an option, you have options such as the Valve Index, which is probably the best VR headset on the market to date with crisp, crisp visuals with high resolution and over 120 frames refresh rate, which is uncomparable to what's currently out there. You also get access to the Valve Knuckles, but you do need base station, so you do require some more space and additional hardware. And I know what you're thinking, a cheap headset could mean a cheap crappy product, but it does not translate to that, so let's continue. So with the Quest, with that 399, you get a Qualcomm 835 Snapdragon mobile processor chip that was in the Samsung S8. But this time it is clocked and dedicated for the VR hardware. This is a tiny processor that you wouldn't expect much from, but the Quest has been showing us time and time again the skill of our developers and provided us with some incredible looking games like Red Matter just months after Quest's release, was able to produce a similar visual fidelity to the PC counterpart. And there is more to come. The Quest does have a 72Hz refresh rate, which isn't that high. This is slightly important for it to be as high as possible in VR. Otherwise, we will see screen stutter and it will take us out of the immersion and make us motion sick. 72Hz is the lowest on the market compared to the Vive, Rift S and the Valve. But from personal experience, the games run great. And this hasn't been an issue, especially if you're someone who hasn't played frequently on these high-end systems. But if you are, you may notice the difference. Oculus did say they actually can get the Quest up to 90 hertz at OC6, but they need FCC approvals. So maybe there'll be an update later on, but perhaps not. Also on the Quest, the field of view is at 100 degrees. The field of view is the peripheral scope you can see in game. The larger it is, the less it looks like you're looking through a window into another world. This has the same field of view as the latest Rift S headset. This could be better like on the higher end systems at 130 on the index, but the majority of headsets I've used up to this point have been the same if not worse. So if you're coming from PSVR, this is something you will be familiar with. Something that I like about the Quest is the OLED screen. It's super bright and colours pop like nothing I'd played on before. I had a Rift S and anything I played on it looked dull. I thought my lenses were fogged up, especially in dark areas, but it wasn't. The resolution of the Quest screen is also 1600 by 1440 for each eye. Although the resolution does sound incredible, it does take more than that to make games look sharp and crisp, but it's a huge benefit on something that I'll come on to on a bit later. And the Quest is wireless, probably one of the biggest selling points that differentiates itself from anything else. And not wireless like the Vive experience if you buy the add-on, but wireless and standalone where you can put it in your bag, take it absolutely anywhere, on a plane, in a pool, to school, to work, anywhere and you can play virtual reality. It's this kind of convenience and ease of use that just isn't really being offered anywhere else but here. Up until I got the Quest, I was falling away from VR. I've been owning the PlayStation VR for 2.5 years prior to this and it was cumbersome, even though they had some of the best VR titles. And when the Quest came out, I was so unsure about purchasing it. But the day it came and I put it on, it all just clicked and this passion was relit. It felt like the start of what VR was actually all about. A downside to this wireless play means it is battery powered and they've not stuck a huge battery inside it. You get two hours of solid VR gaming before you require another charge. This can cause frustrating moments when you want to play and the battery's dead. Although you can play while it charges, but then it's not completely wireless. This hasn't been a big, big issue for me as I don't tend to play for over two hours when I'm out in public anyway, but you might. So you may need to look in buying an external battery pack. 
Because of this standalone design and the battery being integrated all into one unit and it's got a terrible head strap, it does hurt to wear for a long time. It's been very front heavy, weighing around 570 grams, just over half a kilo. Some people experience this more than others, but myself, all the time I have red marks on my face or the back of my head hurts from the headset pulling on it. The strap design is bad, there's no getting around that. Some people are releasing third party add-ons or accessories to help with this. The overall aesthetic of the Quest is quite pleasing, it has a fabric design with a hard plastic case on it that doesn't seem like a really cheap product. It kind of reminds me of the VR version of a Google Home. But something I don't like about it is the foam insert. If you're sharing this headset and everyone gets sweaty playing it, this becomes a very unhygienic piece of kit, so you do do want to wash this frequently if you're sharing it or perhaps get some replacements. The tracking of this headset is done by the latest and greatest inside out tracking with externally facing cameras, following your movement and mapping the surrounding areas. I had no issues with this tracking, I think it is great, especially coming from Gear VR and the PlayStation VR, because that tracking is the worst. On the Rift S and the Quest, the tracking was identical, I couldn't tell them apart. The only problem is, is when you put your hand outside of the camera's view, so that'll be behind your head or up close to your face, as if you're playing a shooting game and you want to look down the gun's scope. This is a common issue for headsets with inside out tracking. If you have external sensors like the base stations, it's much better to avoid this, but that does require additional hardware and space. The Quest requires the headset and you. That is it. You can be in a tiny room and you can still play VR, just don't break anything. If you're like me and the gap between your eyes isn't that big, you're going to need a low IPD headset and the Quest can provide that. With other headsets, they provide a software solution to this IPD problem. The Quest has a manual solution, which you may think, oh, less tech, it's a step back. But not only does it have a low IPD between 58 and 72 millimeters, which is a pretty decent range, because it's manual, it's easily adjustable for anyone to use. No menus or navigations to settings, to adjust the IPD for your game. Or leaving games for readjustment, you can just move the slider and have visual fidelity at your fingertips. Okay, let's talk about games. Oculus have a quality first policy on this headset, which paraphrasing means they won't allow games onto their store unless they have met a certain standard of criteria. Ensuring that we only get great games on this headset. So if you are new to VR, this is a great selling point to you because if you've not been into the world of VR before, I'll tell you, there are some messed up weird things out there you do not want to waste your money on. This at least distills you with some confidence that the game is going to be playable. It may not be great, but it's going to run well. If you're the kind of person that likes to dive into the crazy side of the internet and experience weird, wacky, experimental VR content, you are able to sideload VR games with the use of side quests, which are more than commonly free, but you can buy some and put them onto your Quest headset, increasing your game library, and perhaps you can make your own game and put it on the headset, because it is running on an Android operating system, so if you have an APK, you can pop it on. This sideloading feature has been used more times than I've bought games. It is amazing. Be careful what you put onto the headset though, because if it's copyrighted, it could result into a ban. <coughs> Beat Saber. <coughs> Another one is in early 2020, the Oculus Quest is going to be getting hand tracking. This feature is enabled by developers by them using an SDK to create experiences or applications that can track our hands and fingers to control things instead of us having to use the Oculus touch controllers. The touch controllers are great as they can track your finger, your grip and your thumb movements, but this is the future. The start of the real virtual reality oasis. This feature is coming for free early 2020. The Quest at this point in time has around 130 games on the official store and even more online for you to enjoy. And considering this came out five months ago, there have been a lot of game releases. Some games created specifically for this system. It's not all Rain Dance Maggie though as frequently. We have had games given a release date and then delayed and we've not heard of anything since, like the climb. This is likely due to the system's power limitations running on a mobile chipset and the devs have to work around it. Another point is the Quest. Being a great selling VR headset, it's going to get lots of third party support from creators, which is why it would also be great to be a part of it. The more people that adopt this system, the better it is for every consumer as we will get better games, better hardware and more features. This one, if you've got a gaming PC, it's probably going to seal the deal for you. In November, we will be getting the Oculus Link, known as what some people have been calling the Rift S 
killer. The Oculus Link will allow you to connect to a gaming PC and use your Quest as a tethered PC VR headset. This opens up the library of games tenfold, and we will get to experience games such as Stormlands and Agard's Wrath on our Quests, AAA VR titles, and with its incredible colorful OLED screen and Valve Index-like resolution, I'm sure it's going to look incredible. The image displayed through Oculus Link is compressed, so it will not be as good as native PC VR headsets, but people who have used this link have given it a great review. For someone like myself who is on a budget and wants to experience the best of both worlds at a fraction of the cost, how can I complain? If you don't have a PC capable of VR, I do have a video where I go over specs and find some incredible deals where you can get a really good PC and an Oculus Quest for under £1,000. Or perhaps that's a purchase for another time. This is also where cross-buy games become really great purchases because you can play wirelessly anywhere on the go via your Oculus Quests, but then come home and plug it into the computer and get an even more stunning experience. Oculus are charging $79 for their custom Fiber Optic 3.0 USB cable, but you can get any cable just as long as it supports USB 3.0 or higher. Something a little different to other systems is the Quest can be operated via your phone. Say you're out in the town, you try to talk to a girl, get turned down. To cheer yourself up, you can buy yourself a Quest game. Go to your Oculus app, search and buy. Then when you go home to your Quest, the game will be ready for you to install. You can also change the settings via your mobile phone, such as automatic updates. The Quest also has a pass-through plus system that enables you to walk around with the headset on as it feeds via the external cameras to the screen your surrounding environment so you can see in black and white what's going on around you. You can walk around the house, grab a drink, put some washing in the washing machine, taking a break because you got too scared playing Dreadhalls. Another great feature is the Guardian system on the Quest where you can map out your play area. It was really annoying first, it was hypersensitive and would come on before you were even at your boundary, but after some updates and complaints this is no longer the case. It's a click of the button to the home screen to set your play area and you just simply point and draw to map out your play space. The Quest can also now map different rooms so you can have multiple play spaces without having to recalibrate. It will check your surroundings and know where you are. So if you have an area downstairs in the front room where no one's watching TV and a play area in the bedroom, the Quest will pick up on your surroundings and set the correct play space for you. I hope Facebook's not using that data for something naughty. Also, the Quest Online VR community is a great place to be. It's a lots and lots of VR enthusiasts who just want to play some great games. So get a Quest and join in. I've seen newcomers being blown away by this product. I've seen people who think VR is a gimmick try this product and change their mind immediately. This is an incredible piece of kit. I was kind of down in the dumps about virtual reality for a long time. I had the PlayStation VR headset, so I was a bit apprehensive about buying the Quest. But when I bought it and it turned up, as soon as I put it on, my VR fire inside of me was revitalized and I was not disappointed. For you guys, you could buy this headset and you have up to 28 days before you can return it if it's something that you don't like. So there's not much to lose here. So there were many points to go over. I probably missed something. And if I did, please leave it down in the comments just in case I missed something and it was really important to somebody watching this. I hope this has helped you decide whether or not to get the Oculus Quest because in my personal opinion, this is a great entry point for virtual reality and they are a company that clearly, clearly care about innovation and want to be a leading, a market leader in this space. So I'm going to go play some games now. I hope to see you again. Thanks for watching Steve Knows. Happy gaming, guys. Good day.